Today, I'm announcing a surge of federal law enforcement into American communities plagued by violent crime. What we're in the middle of is a propaganda war, and Portland is in the crosshairs of that. These are professional agitators. These are people that hate our country. If it's law enforcement or protesters, no one seems to be really excited that people are documenting this stuff. You, the media, have caused all of this. And a lot of people weren't reporting it right. They tried to pretend it was a protest as opposed to anarchists and agitators. You understand what I'm saying. Are you okay? What is wrong with you? You can't make this stuff up, but it's also a little hard to believe. We're here for a reason. So why the fuck we gotta keep doing this shit? Every night we go out in fear, like there's a really good chance that we are going to get arrested. Are we at the back of this line? Yes. We don't want to be at the back of this no. line. No. I've been arrested and tear gassed and shot and brutalized while wearing a press vest. So, Marina, you're bleeding. I know. I got beat down by the federal agents out there in front of the courthouse. Either you meant to shoot me, or you don't care who you're shooting. In either case, there's something severely messed up about that. And I guess in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I don't want to photograph another person die. You don't think about it until much later, and that's, that's when the shaking starts. I get physically ill at the thought of more of this shit. Repression has become, like, my biggest strength. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a photojournalist. I wanted to, to see the news and I was supposed to read it from somebody else. And it's always like a curiosity that I've had. Like, what are they hiding from me? What am I not seeing? Like, why do people believe different things? How, how does there multiple truths to a single event? In some ways, protests, you know, exist for the camera. I mean, it's a weird symbiosis. It's like protests are perpetuated because the footage goes viral and people around the world get outraged on one side or the other. You know, sometimes the same footage can prove something for the left and it can prove something for the right too. I mean, they, these things can be kind of appropriated. You know, we're living in a post-truth world. That said, my paychecks aren't signed by the anti-fascists, you know what I mean? Like, I'm there to show the good, the bad, and the ugly with what, no, what is going good. on. How do I look? You know, this is a story that's playing out uh, nationally in uh, echo chambers and in, on platforms that are being lorded over by tech companies. And we're at the mercy of those uh, as distributors of our work. All we can try to do is lay out for the record how this is unfolding every night over the course of these now four months. Audio and video documentation during these protests is, is critical. A picture of someone enveloped in tear gas is powerful, but to be able to show the before, the after, and to hear what that sounds like is completely different. Mm. 